Erin Spain. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this DIY dining room buffet table. It could also be used as a console table and there was a lot of trial and error with this project which is often the case. So I'm going to show you what worked for me and what didn't. As always I will link to everything I used in the description box below. I will also link to the written tutorial on my website. If you haven't already please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon and if you have any questions for me please leave those in the comment section below. All right, let's get started. First I cut my wood for the base of the table and we will get to the drawer part later on. But for now I cut my two by two boards to 25 inches long and these will be used for the legs. I did use really junky lumber for this so you could definitely use better wood than I did. I just didn't want to spend much money on this project. Then I cut my one by two into two pieces at 45 inches long and two pieces at 13 inches long, which will serve sort of as an apron or added support around the base of the table. And I cut a one by six into three pieces, each at 16 inches long to serve as the sides and the divider partition for the table. After cutting, I sanded everything as smooth as I could with my orbital sander. Next, I got out my pocket hole jig and adjusted it accordingly based on the thickness of the wood I was working with. I placed the bit that came with the jig into my drill because we will be using pocket hole joinery to attach the majority of this table. I used my pocket hole jig to drill three holes along one side of each of my 16 inch long one by six boards. Next, I swapped out my drill bit with the driver bit that came with my pocket hole jig. I purchased two project panels from Home Depot and left them as is, so they are 16 inches wide and 4 feet long, and these will be the top and bottom of the table. First I chose which side I wanted to be the top of my table and flipped that upside down on the ground, so we're building upside down for now. Then I attached my 1x6 boards to my project panel using 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. These three boards are the end pieces and the center dividing partition. I laid my second project panel on top and pre-drilled holes using a countersinking drill bit. Then I attached my panel to the 1x6 end pieces and divider partition using 2 inch long wood screws. I drilled pocket holes into one end of each of my 2x2 two two boards and attached those to each corner of the box I just built using 2 inch long pocket hole screws. You can add wood glue for reinforcement if you want to. I also drilled pocket holes at each end of my 1x2 pieces and attached those to my 2x2 two two pieces using 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. You can also drive 2 inch long wood screws to attach it directly to the base of the table if you want to. It was a tight fit so a mallet came in really handy just to wedge it into place. Once the legs were assembled, it was time to flip over the table and turn our focus to building the drawers, which <laughs> there was a lot of trial and error with that. I don't have a lot of experience building drawers, so let me just tell you what didn't work first and then we'll talk about what worked. So here I am cutting one by six boards, which originally I used one by six boards for the sides, front and back of the drawers. Well. It was too tight of a fit, so what I should have done originally and what I did end up doing was using 1x4 boards for the sides and the back, and then I did use a 1x6 just for the drawer front. For the drawer bottoms, I cut a project panel into two pieces, each at 20 and a quarter inch by 13 and 3 quarter inches. For the drawer sides, I cut four 1x4 pieces at 13 and a half inches long each. For the drawer backs, I cut two 1x4 pieces at 22 inches long each. And for the drawer fronts, I cut two 1x6 pieces each at 22 and 6 eighths inches long. But for that piece, you will definitely want to measure it to fit. Now, like I said, I initially used 1x6 boards for the entire drawer and it just was not going to fit. So I did try using my hand planer just to shave some of it off, hoping that would fix it, but it didn't. I did end up using my hand planer just on the drawer front because it was a really tight fit there, but I wanted the drawers to be inset. So I did want to use a 1x6 for that part. So if you don't have a hand planer, you could use a sander for that instead but I definitely found that using 1x4s for the rest of the drawer worked best. After cutting my pieces for the drawers, I went ahead and sanded everything with my orbital sander. Now I assembled the drawer boxes using wood glue and a brad nailer with one and a quarter inch long brad nails. You could use pocket hole joinery for this instead. 
Here I am assembling the original drawers using 1x6 boards. As we all know by now, it did not work out. So I disassembled them and just went back in and redid all of this with 1x4s, but here you'll get an idea of the process. By the way, I love these silicone glue brushes for applying the glue and I will link to that below. Now when it came time to add the drawer front, I measured in a half an inch from each side and attached it that way so that there was an extra half inch on either side once it was attached. I did this to allow for space for the drawer slides because my drawer slides were a half an inch wide. So you'll definitely wanna take that into account. Before painting or staining, you'll wanna use wood filler just to patch over the nail holes. When the wood filler dried, I just sanded it smooth with a sanding sponge. Now it was time to drill holes for my drawer pulls, so I marked the center of each drawer front, and then I measured my handles and marked and measured exactly how wide they needed to be in relation to the center point of the drawer, and then marked and drilled holes. And of course you can use any type of hardware you choose. I found my drawer pulls at Hobby Lobby. And here I am rebuilding the drawers using 1x4s instead of 1x6s for the sides and back. I used 14 inch long drawer slides for this. I just got the cheapest ones I could find at Home Depot. Whenever you install your drawer slides, just follow the instructions that come with them. I'm not gonna go into that too much just because it can vary depending on what type of drawer slides you choose. Okay, when I say there was a lot of trial and error with this project, I mean there was a lot of trial and error. So I painted it and I tried a new kind of paint. It was a chalk finish paint and I just did not love it. I think it's because uh, the shellac that I used, I applied it too thick and I, it might've just been totally user error, I don't know. But I did not like it at all. So I went back over it with actually the paint that I bought for the walls in the dining room and it's called Nightfall by Benjamin Moore but I actually had it color matched in Bear Marquee. So that is the final color that you will see on the buffet table. I will go ahead and link to my furniture painting tutorial because that is the process I use every time. And that's it. Not perfect, but it'll do. And now for the outtakes. This DIY dining room buffet table, or it can be used as a console table. show you what worked for me and what didn't. As always, I will link to every... Blah, blah. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Erin Spain. Welcome back to my... ...to everything that I used in the description box below, as well as I will... No, no. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me online at erinspain.com and on social media at Spain blog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And in the meantime, please check out some of my other videos. Thanks.